Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this presentation. I am Adriana Alvarado, a graduate student from Louisiana State University. And today I'm going to talk about replacing Portland cement in engineer cementitious composites with calcium sulfate aluminate cement. So as you know, concrete is a material that is widely used. For sure, that's why we are here. And it is widely used because it has certain advantages, such as good compressive strength and the ability to be molded in almost any shape thanks to the um, frames that we use. But it also has disadvantages, such as, for example, it doesn't have um, volumetric stability. Also, it has low tensile strength and low ductility which leads to cracking and expelling. And as you know, cement is used in concrete and as Hassan said before, it has around 8% of the greenhouse emissions. Well, it apports to the 8% of the greenhouse emissions. So we have to look for a solution. What is our solution is to design engineer cementitious composites with certain raw materials. So first I'm going to talk about the engineer cementitious composites, which in short it is ECCs. So the ECCs uh, were pioneered by Victor Lee and his team around the 90s to enhance the sustainability of concrete structures. What is an ECC? So here you can have a comparison of an ECC and concrete. So here in this bending um, machine, you can see how the ECC has fine um, cracks and a lot of cracks, while the concrete has a few cracks but they're really white. So thanks to the, these fine cracks, it helps to the ECC to have a better um, support whenever it starts to fail. So, in summary, ECCs are composites with a superior ductility compared to concrete. And also, certain conditions need to be uh, met in order to say that a material, it is an ECC. So, what are they? First of all, control a steady a state of microcracking. It means that while certain load is applied, it needs to, um, so the cracks need to appear slowly and they need to be really fine. <coughs> also, the tensile strain capacity needs to be higher than 1%, but certain, certain authors think that 2% is better. So it is more um, accepted. And finally, how we can um, design a good ECC, we have to think about uh, the fiber, matrix and the fiber matrix interfaces properties. So also what is good about this, is, as I said before, it is made to enhance the sustainability of the concrete structures. It contains supplementary cementitious materials such as fly ash. So the raw materials that we're using to, um, to address the issues that I said before for example, that has a high um, carbon footprint, is that we can use calcium sulfur aluminate cement, which is a cement similar, well, it's not that similar to Portland cement, but we can compare it to in terms of strength, but it is even better if you talk about early development of strength. And also, what is good about this cement is that when it is processed, it doesn't have to reach such a high temperature as the Portland cement. As you know, Portland cement has to go up to 14, 1400 uh, degrees Celsius, while this one's only 1200 degrees Celsius, so 200 uh, degrees Celsius less, which translates to a uh, savings in terms of energy. And as I said before, the CSA cement 
is a fast hardening cement and achieves structural strength in just one hour, since the final setting is only 20 minutes. And what is amazing about this is that it also offers shrinkage as ability. Also, we're not using fly ash because as fly ash, it, it is an amazing material. Um, the demand need is increasing, so the price and it's the scarcity too. So we have to look for uh, something else to replace it. In that case, we're using bottom ash. What is bottom ash? So the flash, sorry, the ash that it is on the bottom of the, of the, it's like a, of the power plant, of the power plant. So it is usually mixed with other impurities and that's why it's not as highly demanded as the fly ash. So we're using that instead because research have found that the bottom ashes increase, uh, increase their resist resistance to chloride penetration. So the translation of this is that it may be more durable. And it favors the refining the concrete um, compressor strength and flexural strength. And that's what we need. So the motivation of doing this research is that the existing literature has explored the development of low carbon cementitious materials, but there is a gap in the research about investigating the durability of, ha of fast hardening low carbon cementitious uh, composites. In this case, engineered uh, cementitious composites. So our objective is to investigate the, f the feasibility of replacing Portland cement with calcium sulfur aluminate cement in the ECC while maintaining the essential, the essential mechanical properties and shrinkage. The methodology that we use is going to be uh, explained here, but first let me talk to you about the raw materials what we can find. So with uh, HRF, we found out that the composition of the oxides is totally different among Portland cement, boron ash, and of course, calcium sulfaluminate. Calcium sulfaluminate has um, calcium sulfate aluminate OCSA, has a, a higher, well, in that case, has a lower um, content of calcium, sorry, I forgot how to translate that in my mind. As you can see, English is my second language. So calcium oxide has a, low, a little bit lower content as the Portland cement, but as you can see here in the SEM images that we were able to get, <laughs> is that also the calcium sulfate aluminate has a lower particle size. It is around 10 micrometers, while the Portland cement is around 15. Here is the, is the mix design that we use. In this case, we design um, a mix 100% with calcium, uh, with CSA, but we change the percentage of the boron ash. What I'm seeing about 100% CSA is that we don't, we didn't use Portland cement, and our ash to cement ratio was point, uh, 1.2 and 2.3. As you can see, the cement there that you see is the percentage of the total binder, which is, was 45 and 30%. And if you're wondering what's the matrix for a total uh, cubic meter, this is, the, this is the matrix that we use in terms per cubic meter. So first, well, mixing ECC is kind of tricky. So you have to be wise and change the way that you meet in order to avoid agglomeration because this is a typical issue that we face. Um, here you can see the raw materials that we use, sand, Portland cement, or, well, in this case, you won't see the results of Portland cement. You will see only the results of, of calcium sulfate aluminate and boron ash. So it was dry meat first, and then we added all the wet materials, which are water, um, super plasticizer, water reducer, and citric acid. What is citric acid, you may ask? Uh, in this case, we are using it as a retarder because 
as you saw before, the selling time is only 20 minutes, so we won't have enough time to mix and set, well, and cast. So we had to add uh, citric acid in order to increase the setting time. Uh, so we have enough time to mix and mold. And of course, water. After that, we were able to add the fiber. And adding the fiber is another process that may take a little, a little time, extra time, especially if you're working with PE fibers. PE fibers are hydrophobic, so it's kind of hard to mix. So you have to pre-disperse them before adding to the mix. And you do it really slowly, and then a final mix, do it, doing it quicker to ensure um, a right dispersion. These are our preliminary results. So here is, you can see how the setting time is affected by the citric acid. So we can see that the initial setting time is around 42 minutes, while the final setting time is around 52 minutes. And this uh, design only uses 55% boron ash. So for Portland cement, the initial setting time is around 30, 45 minutes, and the final setting time is not early than 5.5 hours. This translates to the, cal the calcium sulfate aluminate uh, ECC. Well, in this case, we didn't use fibers to avoid uh, any um, like irregularity because of the fibers. So the motor with CSA cement uh, had almost the same in initial setting time, but the, the final setting, it is almost seven times, well, it is more than seven times quicker than the Portland cement, which means that we save time, and this translates to save money in repairment and even in any structure. Okay, so let me talk to you about the compressor strength and how it is compared to Portland cement, ECCs. So the ECC is based, uh, well, made with CSA cement. Uh, we have that at just one day of age has a 39 megapascals. And if I'm not wrong, this is around 5.8 kilo, kilo pace, um, keep, uh, sorry, kilo pascal, sorry. So let's, let's keep going. So yeah, so as I said before, at one day of age, it is 39 megapascals, and at seven days, it is 41 megapascals. But what happens at 28 days, here is, here is what you have. So the pointing, uh, the dotted bar is our, is our design, our, our design. So here you can see that at 28 days, it almost reaches uh, 60 megapascals, with 55% of ash, while with 70, it reaches around 32 megapascals. And compared to Portland cement, which it is a comparable uh, mix design by RC and all, we can see that uh, even at 28 days, our results are, are better than the ones, used, the ones that only use Portland cement which translates to a 9% increase in compressive strength whenever we're using 55% of ash and 5% of increase in the compressive strength whenever we're using 70% of ash. This is the tensile uh, properties. This, uh, this is an uniaxial tensile stress test and what you see here is that every peak that you see um, translate to a drop later on the stress, which means that another crack was the pelum. So to, re to just summarize this graph, it is saying that it is a, um, it is a fast, sorry, it is a, uh, a strain, it has a strain hardening behavior, which is the, one of the characteristics that we need to follow or we need to, uh, we need to um, 
show in order to say that our material it is an ECC. And our result shows uh, that the solid strength it is 5.7 megapascals and the strength capacity it is 4%, which is amazingly good for an ECC. So just to wrap up, preliminary results point out uh, that Portland cement can be completed can be completely replaced by CSA cement, and the initial setting was almost the same as the old Portland cement, and the final setting is even quicker. And the compressive strength of the CSA ECC is higher than Portland cement ECC. More repetitions and more studies are needed to understand the partial replacements of Portland cement, and also we have to study the life cycle assessment of these new materials. These are the references, and thank you for the uh, thank you to my authors, to my co-authors, Dr. Hassan Nurbain and Dr. Murray, and of course to the funding CPTC.